My name is F.J. Runyon and welcome to Tree ID 101 where we'll be learning leaf ID skills, which is part of morphology. We won't be learning scientific names of trees, that's taxonomy, and that'll be taught later in another class. So let's talk leaves. Trees depend on leaves to make food. Every leaf is like a little factory making food for the rest of the tree. Now when you see a leaf, the first thing you notice is its shape. Leaves can help you identify trees. Some leaves, like conifers, may be narrow or needle-like, while deciduous leaves are broad or blade-like. So when we describe the different leaf compositions, leaf shapes, leaf margins, and leaf venations, scientists use special terminology or words. And if everyone uses the same terminology, we'll understand each other. Now we're going to go over them briefly in class, but you will need a key to help in the identification. But first, let's go over some tricks. A leaf arrangement is either opposite or alternate, with the fewest being opposite. Remember the saying, mad horse. Now that's a maple, an ash, a dogwood, and a horse chestnut or a buckeye. Mad horse will help you with most opposite leaf arrangements. Well, what about conifers? Well, that's easy. Pine needles come in a bundle or a pile of two, three, or as in the case of the white pine, five. P is the code word. Spruce needles are square. S is the code word. Fir needles are flat. That's right. F is the code word. Now those are tricks. Now here's the terms. Leaf composition are simple, compound, palmately compound, that's the horse chestnut and the buckeye, pinnately compound, or bipinnately compound, which belongs to the beautiful Kentucky coffee tree. Leaf shapes are right here. Don't confuse this with the margin. Look here at the shape. Leaf margins are not necessarily the shape. And finally, leaf venations. Some trees are deciduous and others are evergreen. Deciduous trees, like the maples and elms, now they lose their leaves in the fall. And evergreens, like the spruces and pines, keep their needles for up to three years before losing them. But Mother Nature sometimes throws us curves. How would you classify a boxwood, a holly, or a rhododendron? Their leaves are broad and flat, and they aren't lost during the winter. They are called broadleaf evergreens because they keep the leaves for many seasons and stay green all winter. Another interesting twist is the deciduous conifer. Now they have needle-like leaves and bare cones just like conifers, but each year they lose their needles like deciduous trees. And a bald cypress is a good example of a deciduous conifer. So let's go over some leaves. Let's do the American elm. It's not a mad horse. The leaf arrangement is alternate. The leaf composition is simple. The leaf shape is elliptical. The leaf margin is double serrate. The leaf venation is pinnate. This is a very easy lift to understand and identify. Let's do one more. Let's do the northern red oak. It's not a mad horse. The leaf arrangement is alternate. The leaf composition is simple. The leaf shape is elliptical. That's right, I said don't confuse the shape with the margin. That shape is very similar to the elm shape. It's the margin that's lobed. Let's do one more. Let's do the sweet gum over here. It's not a mad horse. It is a leaf arrangement, is alternate. The leaf shape is orbical. The leaf margin is lobed. And the leaf venation is what's palmate. As you can see, it takes a lot of practice and a good tree ID key in tree identification. This key from Missouri Department of Conservation, 50 common trees of Missouri, is a very good starter. 
it will have information on the 50 trees, plus it will have a deconomist key that is easy after some practice. It also has the terms that we went over earlier. Again, this is from Missouri Department of Conservation. Well, what about the winter time? This is by far the best key I ever used. With this simple key from MDC in a 10 power glass, you can ID every Missouri native. Now this concludes leaf identification and a quick stop at MDC to acquire your key and you're on your way to becoming a tree ID pro.